Welcome back to America's Boating Club sail course. Today we're going to look at chapter 18, storm conditions. Here's a video of, of an ocean race uh, showing some uh, the Volvo 70s out on their around the world race. Um, it's just it's just fabulous footing of heavy weather sailing and how the sailors have to be prepared for anything. What I thought was especially noteworthy is that certainly taking the water over the bow and you know giving the crew a shower as it crossed each wave. But more importantly, I did not speed up the, the video. This is actual live speed in these boats that are going this fast. The other thing I thought was somewhat noteworthy is actually is when you see the boom, we're going at these speeds, but yet the sail actually has a reef in it to, to make the boat even more controlled. See the reef in this sail? This is why I stopped doing long distance races. It's more as, as much a speed deal as it is a, a test of endurance. My strategy for dealing with this kind of weather conditions or these conditions is to really um, be prepared. It's certainly dependent upon the, the, the boat and my crew experience, um, whether I would even be going out on a condition on days like those conditions on Lake Clinton. Probably not. You know, we're we're we we shouldn't be surprised. However, some days when I'm trying to squeeze in a race or an event, we might look very carefully at the uh, the weather reports, the mo computer models, the radar systems to see whether there is a window for a short um, short event to occur. As you know, my weather forecasting is notoriously bad, uh, but we can certainly need to watch the weather around us, uh, the clouds that are coming. You know, they typically come from the west towards us. Over Lincoln, we can look at what's happening in Lincoln on the internet and see that's probably going to affect us in a, oh, a half hour or so. And if if we're out caught in a you know you know in a weather that we weren't quite ready for, uh, there are some things we can do. So let's look at what those might be. Heaving two is a, a technique that we can use that actually takes the boat and you know makes it takes all the pressure out of the out of the the wind. You know when when really bad conditions. You know I haven't really done my, heave two very often. Uh, most of the time when it, the conditions are in this category, I just get back to shore and put the boat away. But if you're caught out in a big body of water, it's not possible to get back to shore. So then we need to deploy some of these techniques. So essentially what we've got is a jib uh, backwinded. So, in, you know, we've got typically we would have the jib on this side. But in this case, we, we're going to backwind the jib. We're going to have the 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 main out in its normal spot and then we're going to be pushing the helm down this is this is going to cause the boat to kind of rock back and forth as we go down you know as we go across the wind as the boat tips as the wind blows our jib down our main is then going to kick in and push the boat so the jib will push the boat this way as the boat tips that way further then our main is going to push in and cause it to go the other direction. It's going to push it that way. And then our helm is going to cause the boat to kind of turn that way. So it's just, it's a combination of all three of those effects sort of neutralizing each other out. 
This is a technique we might use when we're out on the water. We want to take a break from sailing, uh, have lunch, or just catch a breath. If the wind builds so much that lying a hull or heaving to is not uh, uh, an option for us, we might lie a hull. And essentially, this is is we pull all the sails down, we'll lash the helm in the middle, and then go below deck to ride it out. We've done I've done that on on Lake Michigan one time when we were in the middle of a squall with you know with half inch hail coming down. The skipper was still up on deck watching to make sure that we weren't running into anything, but the rest of us were down in a nice dry cabin below. We could also run off. Now on, on Clinton Lake, there's not enough room for us to run off. But what you might do is actually just as we're lying a hall, we might put our, you know, put the boat in a downwind situation and just let the boat rock downwind and not worry about running into anything. And so um, we need to have the, the helmsman watching the boat as it's going down so that we don't go sideways down the waves because then we could roll. Um, and we don't want to bury the ball, bow, bury the bow into the back of a wave in front, which will cause it to pitch pole. Um, and we need to make sure that we've got enough room on the lake so that we don't run aground, run ashore down on the downwind side. If we're on Lake Clinton, we might just throw an anchor out and let the wind blow us, uh, you know, throw an anchor out and then just let the boat go into the wind and just kind of ride the waves out. But if we're out in deep water where we, you know, the anchor isn't going to be able to reach, which, you know, is, you know, in, in often, often in deep water might be a couple hundred feet deep and we don't have anchors that are, you know, anchor roads and all that stuff that goes along with it. We might deploy a sea anchor. And what a sea anchor is, is it's a parachute like device that sits out here and tied to the front of the bow. And so this parachute is underwater. And what it does is it slows the boat from drifting backwards, and then it, it controls the boat and lets the bow go into the waves, so it's a you know it's not going to get knocked around or rolled around. Another option for hang, handling a boat in big waves and big wind when you can't get ashore is to hang a drogue off. A drogue attaches to the stern, and what this does is then it slows the boat down so that you don't go faster than the waves in front of you. In those big waves, we want to just kind of let them ride, ride up at the same rate uh, as our boat is traveling. We would be put a drogue out when we've got our poles down, you know, no sails up or anything like that. And we would just let this hold the boat and slow the boat down from the stern. So a drogue runs from the stern, uh, sea anchor is tied off on the bow. If we don't have a drogue, we can also throw out several lines and just let them drag in the water. And what those do is cause a lot of uh, drag, friction, and then actually it's surprising how much lines just dragging straight can slow the boat down. Let's go over our vocabulary for this week. Batten down, that's really just to secure all the hatches and ports and so that water doesn't get below in case of heavy weather. A drogue is something that we're going to hang off the stern of our boat to slow it down so that uh, the boat doesn't get tipped sideways when we're in bad weather. Heave two is to bring a boat into position where there's little headway, usually with the bow in the wind or the current. Lay two is, is to lie without headway by, by either using a sea anchor uh, and let the boat uh, drift backwards, lying a hull. Pitch ball, we've had some pictures of that in some of the other class uh, chapters. That's when the bow hits a wave in front and the boat momentum causes the boat to fly up. Uh, the bow buries into the wave and the stern rises up above it. A sea anchor is a parachute-like device that we can tie off the bow to hold the bow into the wind in heavy weather. And under bare poles is when we're sailing and we don't have any sails up and we're just letting the wind blow the boat around. For some fun, I'm gonna show, the next slide is going to have a, uh, a 
video of a laser pitch polling. Here's a video of a laser pitch polling out in big waves and big wind. They were intentionally trying to do this. I guess this goes along with the story. Don't try to do this at home. In fact, I don't know how we could do it at home because we would never get this much breeze. This concludes chapter 18 on storm conditions. Our next chapter will be on anchoring and docking.